Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here. This is Daniel Rosal bringing you today's video from a field in uh, the state of Connecticut in the US. This is a Connecticut field. And I want to talk today, I want to do a video for this um, side YouTube channel I've started about the merits of camcorders. I've done a video about camcorders before and you know a little bit more slick production value and divided into chapters and I get a trickle of comments for that from fellow camcorder fans but naturally that's kind of like a bit like speaking to the choir so I wanted to do another one of these videos intended for folks who are um, getting into videography you're looking to get into videography whether you're looking to do a YouTube channel or you're looking to do commercial videography or like I do some kind of a mixture of the two like you're doing a bit of video for work and you're also doing a bit of video for pleasure like a YouTube channel which you might put out there for fun which is pretty much why I uh, put out videos on YouTube myself. So yeah I want to talk about camcorders today and why I think camcorders are really like just the most underrated one of the most underrated products in technology. I put them in a kind of a similar category to desktop computers right stuff that people think is kind of old school and do they even still make them anymore but yes they do make them and they have a crazy loyal user base and certainly I would say that's judging by the comments I get um, camcorders are in the category and actually the longer I do stuff with video <coughs> I'm actually getting a sense that the camcorder community is bigger than a lot of people think and that even a lot of people who are into camcorders uh, realize it's still very much a vibrant community. So again I want to bring this down to simple terms about what camcorders are and the first thing I'm going to say at the outset is and this is going to kind of throw people off I don't I'm not really sure there's any definition for what a camcorder is but I'm going to give a few distinguishing features. So the most common things that people use today for making video I would say if you put into YouTube best camera for video 2023 or whatever the year is you're going to get people recommending DSLR and mirrorless. I won't get into the difference between DSLR and mirrorless cameras because it's not really pertinent to the topic, but suffice to say that those are, you know, basically intended for photography, still photography, and pretty much they can all do video these days. Every camcorder can take photos, every mirrorless can do videos, everything can do everything, but that doesn't mean that certain products don't do certain things a lot better than other products. Camcorders are built for video and their distinguishing factor we're talking at the base of the market up to kind of the like high end which is really broadcast stuff is that they are fixed lens. A fixed lens means that the lens which is where the light comes into the camera and then it hits the sensor is going to be fixed. So why is that a bad thing for some people and why is that a good thing for some people? And it's a bad thing for some people is the lens affects the image to an extent and when people are doing cinematic projects or they want to change up the look and feel of an image you know photographers have a ton of lenses different lenses also have uh, different focal lengths and different qualities as well so when you've got a, a camera with a fixed lens it has to be a lens that kind of does it all and that's actually what i love about the canon xa40 and camcorders in general because i don't do stuff that's really cinematic i've done some conference videography for work i do a lot of recording interviews with people and yeah there's certain things you sacrifice by only having that fixed lens to rely upon there's also things you gain i'm always surprised by the versatility of the lens on the xa40 you can do everything from shooting close-ups of bees you know feeding on flowers and just be amazed at the detail that comes out or i you know i shot some videos of birds um when I was in Venice last year and just you know you can really see the the definition the quality of the image is amazing and then on the flip side on the telephoto side you can shoot I've used this same camcorder to shoot at conferences where you need to get zoom to get past the audience members and I've also shot uh, airplanes landing and taking off on runways from a quite considerable distance that if you didn't see the zoom it, you'd be barely able to see the airplanes as well so um, that's really kind of the beauty of the lens on camcorders. Something else I'd say about camcorders is they're great value for money. And this really throws people off because people look today at the camcorder market and say, well, you know, I want to get a 4K or a 6K or an 8K capable camcorder. And I'm having to pay a lot more to get that basic spec, that, resol that capable resolution in camcorders than I am in um, still cameras. So it turns people off camcorders, but you actually have to look at what you're getting with a camcorder. If you just look at the lens on, for example, the Canon XA40, and I'm just mentioning that repeatedly because it's a camera I use, you will see that it's probably, if you try to buy the same lens, right, with the same focal lens range for a DSLR mirrorless or even a cinema camera, it would cost more than the camcorder itself. 
So camcorders are basically all-in-one uh, packages. They have a form factor that you're probably familiar with. I'm not that young that I don't remember when uh, my grandfather had an analog camcorder that you had to fed tape into. I think it was from uh, JVC. And that's kind of the camcorder look still. The reason that camcorders started out in that shape probably had to do with the fact that they were loaded up with cassette tapes. Nowadays, it has to do with the fact that it's got a big lens that's welded onto the sensor. So you need a bit of body to take up to cover up that lens. And that gives them this kind of, you know, ob I don't know how to say that, a rectang rectangle shape versus this kind of more compact shape with their uh, interchangeable lens camera. So camcorders um, are really good value when you look at what you're getting with them. So you're not maybe getting on a dollar for dollar basis the same resolution capability you might get with other camcorders but you're uh, with other cameras uh, but you're getting an all-in-one package two or arguably three types of cameras that are built for video are camcorders cinema cameras and maybe action cameras you could argue as well because i don't know of anyone who uses action cameras for taking still shots versus dslr and mirrorless so they can again they can all do video but they're not built for that purpose so when you build stuff for video and commonly for a large part of the user base for camcorders, it remains documentary, broadcast, um, and ENG, which are really kind of the same thing. ENG stands for electronic news gathering. So those are kind of the classic camcorder user bases and then a dedicated hobbyist user base. Other places you'll see camcorders really dominate are uh, conferences. So if you're doing conference videography, you're going to see most people rock up to those uh, recording them with camcorders, just because, again, you don't need a glamorous lens to shoot a conference panel generally. So you want a versatile lens, it'll really get the job done in a lot of, in a lot of uh, varieties. And that's again where camcorders sort of come into their own. Another thing on camcorders, at the pro end of the market, now there's consumer camcorders, a few of them, and professional camcorders. Like a lot of words in tech, uh, the definitions are a lot more fluid than the kind of distinctions would suggest, as well as these from prosumer, an amalgamation of consumer and prosumer. <laughs> consumer camcorders, generally, they take out a couple of functionalities that you're going to need for or use more in professional workflows. One of them is XLR audio ports, um, something you'll see in, pr in pretty much all pro camcorders, which allows you to connect like this microphone I'm recording into, the Shure SM58, recorded on XLR. Uh, time code on um, some of the more expensive camcorders and SDI output for people who are using them for broadcast because SDI remains a the kind of technical standard for broadcast as opposed to HDMI for streaming or you know uh, broadcasting right and really streaming if you think about it, it's just kind of a form of broadcasting that is more um, perhaps uh, more versatile between professionals and amateurs and can you know it doesn't necessarily be on a t it doesn't have to be on a tg tv channel it can be digital only but it's kind of two sides of the same coin so again just those couple of things so my recommendation would personally be if you're buying a camcorder to go with their professional camcorder because the advantages you're getting by sticking with the camcorder are you're going to allow yourself to grow in the world of video so if there comes a point in time where you need you can do everything with a camcorder up to use interchangeable lenses. And if you want interchangeable lenses, there are camcorders that do it at the top end of the market and cinema cameras do it at the lower end of the market. Cinema cameras are the other type of things that are built for video. So you may be wondering, well, what's the difference between a camcorder and a cinema camera? Example of a cinema camera would be the Black Ma Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera at the low end and something like the RED cameras, which are, what, which are what Hollywood uses at the top end. Cinema cameras have interchangeable lenses. So unlike camcorders, they all can pretty much be swapped out. Other than that, again, we're kind of like getting into terms of terms of art here, like in really a, a kind of top end camcorder with interchangeable lens. You could argue that that is a type of cinema camera. It's not so uh, cut and dried as, again, as I said, as these names would suggest. Final advantages I point to really, if you're looking to um, get into the world of camcorders versus those other other more, let's say, sexy, glamorous types of camcorders. And I'll just kind of round up with the disadvantages as well. An advantage that sounds like a disadvantage would be there's actually a lot less camcorders on the market. If you go onto B&H Photo Video and you uh, go into the camcorder section, count up how many results you get, 
go into DSLR, then go into mirrorless, mirrorless a lot more than DSLR these days and add those two numbers together and you're going to see there's a lot more uh, mirrorless cameras on the market. It's a much more vibrant market than camcorders. The reason I say this is an advantage is because, well, you've got a smaller smaller array of options. You've got Canon, Sony, JVC, Panasonic, um, and there's probably one or two I'm forgetting, but that's kind of like the camcorder world. There's like f probably five or six good manufacturers. Um, and it actually makes it a lot easier to pick your camcorder because you can go onto a website like B&H Photo Video and say, well, here's what I need. I need it to be 4K or I need it to be 6K. I need it to have two XLR jacks and I need it to have, you know, um, a hot chew or whatever the case may be. And you might find yourself choosing between two or three options and it just makes it a lot easier than having been flooded with lots of cameras that are sub sort of intended both for the world of... Um, photo and video now obviously if you are going to be using the camera primarily or substantially for photos flip everything i've recommended i would say in that case it does make sense to go for a dslr or a mirrorless uh, camera but if you're sticking with just video or that's what you want to get into i strongly strongly urge or really it's probably a bit too strong recommend that people don't overlook the uh, camcorder market finally the disadvantages of camcorders because it wouldn't be fair to just kind of like spit out what's good about them without also saying why there are valid reasons that people don't want them. So I've talked about the fact that you can get the same, often higher video specs at a lower price point in the worlds of DSLR and mirrorless. I've explained that just looking at that as your barometer value for money is a mistake because with camcorders, you're getting a whole package that includes the lens. And often if you add up the value of the lens, you'll find that it's actually, camcorders are a super, super good deal. Uh, but some people that just turns them off the fact that they you know have to pay over a thousand bucks to get their 4k capable or whatever it's going to be in a few years uh, the second second uh, reason that is kind of less known that I would point to is that um, it is kind of harder sometimes to shoot with a camcorder because they have that very professional look and even if you're just shooting stuff for YouTube videos or for b-roll um, they tend to attract more attention than um you know uh mirrorless cameras which kind of are just so commonplace now that it's almost like a smartphone so that can be a disadvantage when you know there's like security around and maybe or people photobombing you uh because they think they're going to get on the news so that's i know it sounds a bit frivolous but that's actually something i find is a big disadvantage and the second is that camcorders generally the, the only time i actually wish i didn't buy a camcorder really is when you're doing stuff like shooting out an, shooting out an airplane window like you want to get footage of you know a flight and that's those kind of like tight spaces are instances where the big camcorder can be a liability but other than that camcorders these days have really the pro camcorder market where you've got the classic pro features has really come down in physical size i recommend i really like i should say the canon xa series which is what i'm recording this video i'm recording this into an xa40 you've got the xa series now goes up to the xa75 that's canon's kind of basic pro camcorder um and then you have as i mentioned stuff from sony panasonic and jvc as well um but they're all they've come down a lot in size so the kind of classic big big cameras that broadcast crews continue to use really don't actually pack an awful lot of additional functionality over the more compact pro camcorders on the market today um they just have a lot bigger batteries more uh, trans some you know radios for transmission all the stuff that news crews find invaluable to get stuff straight from a scene up to a, up to a newsroom. But I've actually seen a few news guys, uh, news cameramen, who are like amazed by the XA40 because they don't need to be sold on the virtues of camcorders, but they love the fact that you can take the camcorder that they have to put on their shoulder and condense it into a small enough size that can be put into a backpack. So um, that's going to wrap up my uh, speech on camcorders. Um, again, if you're just looking to get into video, I one of the things I would, there are a couple of decisions I've not recommended or regretted in video. One of them is actually starting too low, getting too cheap of a camcorder to start with. Um, my recommendation is save a little bit of money and just get something good. And that's going to last you a few years and give you lots and lots of room for growth um but st sticking with camcorders for my first camera the canon vixia hfr 800 through to the xa40 i'm shooting on today and whatever my next camcorder is going to be and whenever i feel like i need you know it's time to upgrade uh definitely don't recommend it and think that people should really consider them thanks for watching i hope this video was useful if you have any thoughts you're also a camcorder fan or you just uh have your own thoughts 
agreements or criticisms or whatever, leave them in the comments. Have a good day.